Dub dub. What is up everybody? My name is David Franco. I am a full-time content creator. Uh, WWDC 2020 began today. It doesn't really feel like it because of COVID-19. Th things are very different right now. Uh, so they quite literally had to take their entire event, which invites people from all over the world and say, hey, look, you stay home, you stay home, stay safe. We're going to an online only event. So this is a big deal, like a huge change. And I got to be honest, I was very worried about this because for me, half of the fun from the experience is the crowds reactions i mean is it just me? obviously it's not just me but i'm i'm just saying like i love the applause even if it is mostly apple employees sometimes with, like the littlest things but for me that's part of the fun like i i love people's reactions um to these announcements but i'm happy to say apple pulled off a really well done production a little cringe here and there but i th i think they know they were being cringe and it was they they were using some like tongue in cheek humor and the whole underground secret lab kind of thing was pretty cool. I don't know, I don't know, I liked it. So anyway, instead of my usual WWDC coverage, um, where I typically go through every single like bullet point that was announced or covered, in today's video, I'm just gonna focus on things that I thought were most interesting. And uh, honestly, I'm, I'm a little distracted right now because news just broke less than an hour ago. Uh, with Mixer shutting down and moving their partners, if they want to anyway, over to Facebook Gaming. Like, that's huge news in itself. So I'm a little distracted right now. I've had nothing to eat. I'm very lightheaded. I just, I, I don't have a lot of energy. Um, so anyway, with that said, let's get into this video. And as always, I do have notes right below the camera. So you will see me referencing those notes. Let's go. All right, so first up, iOS 14. By far the most important feature for me was widgets. Thank you, Apple, thank you. Like, I'm not a daily Android user. I don't love Android, I don't hate Android, but every time I do get my hands on an Android phone, I just can't help but set up those widgets right away. Like, I've always really, really enjoyed the widgets experience in Android. I think it makes the home screen experience that much more exciting. And unfortunately, you, you can't get that experience with iOS's home screen unless you swipe to the right and go to the today view where you can access the widgets. And yeah, those are cool. I actually, I actually use them all the time, like all the time. But I would much rather have those widgets on my home screen. And Apple, doing the Apple way, you know, they're finally bringing that experience over to iOS and it looks amazing. Like it's very clean. The widgets are beautiful. Everything just blends in with the iOS home screen experience. And I'm very, very excited to see um, how everything looks and feels when iOS 14 does release. But even with that said, I, I might do the public beta. Also, we have picture-in-picture -picture video coming to the iPhone. This is actually a huge feature and something I think I find myself wanting quite often. Like, I, I don't think about it, but I'm often annoyed where I want to keep watching something like a Twitch stream, but I have to close the Twitch app to go back to Twitter, to go back to my email, to go back to whatever I'm doing at the time. So now, in theory, I can just minimize the video into a little picture-in-picture -picture view like I can on the iPad, but on the iPhone. That's a huge deal. Thank you, Apple, for finally bringing that feature over. And that's something I can see myself using almost daily. Siri has a new compact design, basically one that doesn't take up the full screen of your iOS experience. For instance, check this out. What time is it? It's 3.20 p.m. Look at that. So for Siri to tell me the time and take up the whole screen, what? So finally, I think we're gonna get away from that full screen experience and I could not be more excited for that. And I gotta say, that seems to be the biggest focus of today's announcements is Apple seems to be really cleaning up the user interface and making things out of the way, you know? It's like taking essential features like Siri and putting it over there. Putting it over there while still allowing you to focus on your content. And messages, you can now pin conversations, which isn't a huge deal for me, but this next one is pretty cool. Mentions, I'm a daily user of platforms like Twitter and Discord, and I love mentioning people. I love when people mention me because I get alerts. 
So to bring that mesh and experience over to, to iOS, hey, I'm down. iPad OS 14. So a lot of the things on the iOS 14 are coming over to iPad OS 14. We have the redesigned Siri. We have redesigned calls. Thank you. So now when someone calls me on the iPad or iPhone, it no longer takes up the full screen. Like that's huge. And that's, that's something Android's had for a while. So now instead of the full screen, like mom's calling or whatever, um, now it just simply shows up as a notification. And that is huge. Thank you. Universal search on the iPad seems to be useful. I gotta look into that, but hey, it doesn't look like it's anything bad. And Apple Pencil, I don't use my Apple Pencil as much as I thought I would, sadly. Uh, but if you do handwriting notes often, now the iPad can actually um, allow you to edit those handwritten notes, change the color, change the size and stuff like that, um, as if it's actual text. And even then you can convert your handwrite, handwritten text over to actual text. This video kind of sucks, doesn't it? I'm sorry. I I'm very hungry and I'm not that focused. AirPods, let's talk about the AirPods. Now the AirPods can automatically switch between devices. This is huge. Like I don't use my AirPods that often because I work from home. So I often, you know, like my speakers over little tiny earbuds. Um, but I do find myself sometimes like if I'm working in the car or not driving, obviously. Example, we are going to Driftwood next week for our family vacation. And I like to edit in the car on the way. But sometimes I want to seamlessly switch from my MacBook Pro to my iPhone. And apparently with iOS 14, um, this is gonna be a thing, so very cool. And of course we have to mention the AirPods Pro, which I don't have yet because I'm personally waiting for the over-the-ear AirPods, whenever they're gonna come out, I don't know, maybe the fall. Now the AirPods Pro do have support for spatial audio, which is really cool because I've always been a surround sound buff. Like I love surround sound. Like I'm a huge, huge fan of it. So yes, that experience is coming over to the AirPods Pro, which again, I don't have but still, I'm actually kind of considering it. Watch OS 7. Watch OS 7 looks to bring over some really cool features such as multiple complications per watch face, new watch faces from Apple themselves, which is always nice uh, because it's always good to have more options, right? You can now share watch faces with friends. This is really cool. I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I'm gonna use this, but okay, let's say for example, shout out to my friend Danny Minnick who also has an Apple Watch. If he has a really cool setup of complications that he wants to share with me, you can do that. And now you can also download watch faces from websites. I'm about to rip this chair apart. This part, look, look at this. It's Amazon basic shit. It's what it is. David Focus, sleep tracking. That's cool. I have always wanted sleep, well not always, but I've, I've wanted sleep tracking for quite a while. And I gotta say, the battery life on the Apple Watch is really good. Like it's a very, oh, that was, I was like, why is this not working? Siri was up. Apparently I did something with Siri. Anyway, I can track my sleep. This video sucks guys, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm just not feeling it today. I mean, I love this stuff. I'm not feeling, I'm not in the mood to make a video. Sadly, we still have no third party watch faces. It is what it is. Maybe next year. I say that every year, but maybe next year. Okay, moving on to HomeKit. Uh, the Home app is gonna get even better thanks to things like facial recognition on video doorbells. Now, because Apple's partnered with companies like Amazon and Google, um, in theory, I could set up my Nest doorbell, have it recognize someone like my mom's face, and that will actually be announced on my HomePod. So let's say, for example, my mom's at my front door. My HomePod will automatically trigger and say, Mom is at the front door. That's damn cool. That is so, so cool. That's the kind of technology I love. That's what I want these companies to focus on. Focus on giving us things like that. Like I love the idea of having a completely smart home. So thank you. That's a huge step in the right direction in my opinion. And of course we get other things like adaptive lighting where light bulbs will actually adapt to your daytime routine or nighttime routine. And speaking of HomeKit, we can now get that kind of functionality on Apple TV. TV OS 14 will actually support picture in picture video of, again, say someone is at my doorbell, that pop-up will actually show up on my Apple TV, or I can ask Siri to say, show my backyard camera. Very cool. I cannot express it enough. 
I love stuff like that. Moving on to Mac OS Big Daddy. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry, Big Sir. First of all, I know, I know people are laughing at the name, but if you look it up, Big Sur is actually a real mountainous location in California. So yeah, it's a funny name. Apple realizes that. They even made some jokes. But at the end of the day, it's just a name. Big Sur. Let's not forget about High Sierra. Apple knows what they're doing, trust me. So uh, this I didn't see coming. We are getting a significantly revamped user interface for Mac OS. Like, Apple didn't need to do this but they did it anyway. I'm so excited. Like it's ultra clean. A lot of focus on curved design, which looks very nice. I will say the new app icons, not crazy about that. It seems like Apple's pulling away from flat design and putting depth into their icons, like uh, messages in the app store, but hey, it's not a big deal. It's something I'll get used to in a day or two. I mean, I'm not a complainer. I'm all about change, bring it on. We do get control center, which basically is the same as iOS and iPad OS. Um, and saying that we get quicker access to more common features like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, and all that stuff. Hey, I'm all for it. Widgets are back. Yes, I know we've always had widgets, but I sorely miss Dashboard. Like, I love Dashboard. I use it all the time. I think I still have it installed on this Mac. Yeah, look at that. See? There you go. I purposely have not upgraded my Mac OS on this Mac Pro because... I use Dashboard so much. Now, I don't use it anymore on my MacBook Pro. I just finally convinced myself to move forward. I'm like, David, you, you, have, you have to move forward at some point. But on the Mac Pro, I don't know if I'm ready to get, get past Dashboard yet. Like, I, I use it all the time. Who's with me? And apparently Safari is going to get even faster. Uh, this doesn't surprise me. It seems like it happens every year. Um, I know a lot of people prefer Chrome. Personally, I like Safari over Chrome on my Mac, but on my Windows PC upstairs, obviously I'm going to use Chrome. But I just, I love Safari. I'm a big, big fan of it. It's not perfect. Sometimes it really makes me mad. Let's just say that in a nice YouTube friendly way. Um, but overall, I'm a big fan of Safari. And now it's gonna load your often visited websites 50% faster than Chrome. At least that's what Apple claims. But of course, Chrome could get faster by the time January comes around, I don't know. And we're getting heavier focus on extensions. This is something I've always wanted Safari to be better at because obviously Chrome excels in the extensions department. Like if there is an idea you want to add to your Chrome browsing experience, there likely is an extension for it. Um, and now the same thing goes with Safari in theory, so I'm excited. And finally, perhaps the biggest news of the day, but this is the part where I lost focus because Apple announced, a, Apple, Microsoft announced around the same time that Mixer would be shutting down and moving over to Facebook Gaming. Wow, what a day, what a day to be a geek. God, I love this stuff. Uh, I, I, I didn't really focus on this part too much, but from what I saw, it seems to be all, all good news. The Mac is transitioning over to Apple Silicone. So this basically means it's Apple designed chips. In other words, ARM, but Apple's gonna be saying it's their own custom chips, which is a good thing. I mean, it's a win-win. Win for consumers because in theory, we're gonna get, get even faster Macs. We're gonna get faster update cycles, hopefully. And um, it's a win for developers because in theory, it makes it easier for them to create apps uh, for us, the consumer. So again, it's a win-win scenario. I'll say it again. I didn't really pay much attention because of the whole mixer announcement, but you have my word. I will be watching, re-watching that portion of the keynotes um, after I make this video. Well, because I'm a tech nerd, I think I think I need to be in the know of this stuff. In the know? Is, is that what people say? It just sounds horrible. I don't know. Anyway, guys, um, there you go. I'm all in. I gotta say, despite WWDC not being an in-person event this year, where's my keyboard? I'm just trying to keep it awake. Yeah, I gotta say, it was quite exciting. We didn't get a new iMac, um, but that's okay. I, I see it happening in the fall, perhaps alongside a new Apple Watch. And no, I have not upgraded to the new Apple Watch yet. I just don't see the need. And at this point, I might as well just wait. So in a way, I'm really, really glad I waited because I definitely want that always on display. Um, but for now, this Apple Watch has served me well. I love it. I don't really have any major complaints, except for no custom watch faces. I mean, no th no third-party watch faces. Why? 
Why Apple? Please bring it on, baby. Bring it on. But uh, overall, I'm quite pleased with today's announcements. What did you guys think? I mean, I'm a graphic designer, and the fact that Apple is focusing so much on UI design, that means a lot to me as a user and as a designer. So I am so, so hyped to get my hands on all these new software updates. So guys, thank you so much for watching. How do you feel about the Mixer news? Would you, would you like me to make a video about that? Let me know in the comments. That's a very, very exciting topic. All right, I'm out. Thank you. Your support means a lot, and I'll see you next time. Peace.